Hi, everybody, and welcome to issue two of All Thumbs Podcast. I'm Jace Oppie, here with Trevor Spot Eagle. Yo. And our third guest ceremony is actually at Tucson Comic Con this weekend. So we are joined today by a good friend of ours, Paul DeNigris. He is a local filmmaker, and he is a professor at the University of Advancing Technology, where we're kind of filming this thing at. So, hi, Paul. Indeed. What's up, nerds? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, we're right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and jump into our reading list, what we've been reading for the past week. I actually had a real good uh, five-issue run of Adam, Legend of the Blue Marvel, that I just got done reading this morning, in fact. Uh, written by Kevin uh, Grievous, I think is how you say his name. And this whole story is just about this, uh, this superhero that you see here who is an African-American superhero in the 60s. And he basically gets asked by uh, President Kennedy at the time to cease and desist being a superhero because of the political climate at the time. It's a really interesting read. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, go check it out if you have the Marvel Unlimited app. It's available there, all five issues. Otherwise, I'm sure you can pick it up at a local comic shop. Uh, it's great writing. Uh, the artwork is great. Pencils by Matt Broom and Roberto Castro. Just phenomenal uh, ink inking by Sean Parsons, uh, Lorenzo Ruggiero. Ruggiero. Oh, Ruggiero. 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 Sorry. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher names this whole time. Uh, Alvaro <laughs> Lopez is also an inker on that. And then colors were done by uh, John Rausch and Juan Doe. Wow. That, that exists. <laughs> Juan Doe. <laughs> uh, as you can see, though, it's, it's you know, your classic uh, superhero colors. It's the M on, is that an M on his chest? Yeah, the, it's an M on his chest because he's the Blue Marvel. The Marvel, yeah. Yeah, this guy is the Blue Marvel. Um, he actually has a, he goes through a couple of design changes. Um, but it's, this is his standard outfit that you'll, you'll get. For Adam, Legend of the Blue Marble. This is like the cape in the air, the shoulder pad. It's like I, it's just the. <laughs> it's the sixties, man. It's, yeah, it's I mean, a fashion can't, statement. That's yeah. true. Oh no, that would be the eighties with the uh, shoulder pads, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, how does he fit into any sort of Marvel continuity? Is he is, is this just sort of like a one-off Elseworld kind of thing, or is he? So he actually does he kinda, tie in? He, he actually shows up again um, later on, and he fights King Hyperion. But I haven't read any of that. I've, this is actually the first I had actually heard about the superhero. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I, I read a, or I watched a interview with Kevin Grievous, and he's talking about how he's always wanted to make a, a superhero, and this is what he came up with. You know, somebody who's as strong as Superman, but is an African American hero. Hmm. So what's going on with his face there? Is that the mask ripping? Or yeah, is it, this is okay. the, this is, he just got done fighting his uh, best friend slash okay. enemy. Is that uh, him on the ground? Anti-Matter Man, yeah, you can see him uh -huh. uh, holding the yellow costume of uh, Anti-Hero, uh, is his okay. name. <laughs> and, yeah, it's anti... That's great. Yeah, it's like Anti-Hero. What it is, essentially, is they both have the power of Anti-Matter. Okay. So they're basically Anti-Matter reactors themselves, uh, and they pull their energy from the negative zone. Mm. Nice. It's, uh, it's a really good story. Only five issues. Anyways, let's let's move on. What do you got today for us, Trevor? Um, I mean, this isn't like something I've you know finished. This is ongoing, but it's uh, I've been following it since it came out, since issue one. It's Starlight, uh, the new series by Mark Miller. People know him mostly from you know the Kickass comics. Sure. Uh, some of the I think he did Mar a lot of Marvel Unlimited, and he got some what's this, Gordon Parvalo with him doing the art. And I guess you can look at his art through uh, the a lot of the old Punisher issues. Okay. But um, it's really good because we're used to seeing Mark Miller doing Kick-Ass and Hit Girl where there's a lot of like over-the-top violence and blood. But Starlight, is um, it's like a space opera. The, there's a lot of less action, a lot of less blood, but more, uh, more story art going on. And you get this guy right here. This is uh, the older dude there, and that's his younger self, Duke McQueen. Duke McQueen. Duke McQueen. Duke. Yeah. Right? It just yeah. sounds like an old space opera, Absolutely. Flash Gordon like type of character. Absolutely. He is Flash Gordon, essentially. Uh, same. His, Tune like, in next week for the adventures of Duke McQueen. That's this story. <laughs> That's exactly this. Um, you know, a quick overview of Duke was um, normal doing Earth. I think he was a pilot. And uh, his 
plane that caught up and he ended up on a different world through some weird time, you know, space wormhole. And um, he saved this planet who were going through this, uh, like, you know, they were in the middle of the revolution and he led so the he, revolution. So he's John Carter. He's so John, he he's, okay, he's John <laughs> Carter, but he went back home, raised his family, and no one believed him. They thought he was crazy. And this is where Starlight picks up is um, someone comes back, yo, Duke, we need you. And he's he's older now. He's in his, you know, he's in his 70s, his late 60s, somewhere around then. Okay. He doesn't believe that he can do what he did, but, you know, no one believes him on Earth. His, his sons, they, you know, they don't believe him. So he, you know, yeah, I'll go. And he goes and he's trying to save this planet once again, but in his sixties, and he's a legend there. But he's <laughs> he's just this old dude live, trying to live up to his name. It's a really great series. I think there's I think six issues out right now. You know, go pick all of them up. Go pick every one of them up. So I know this is the first uh, comic that we're actually featuring that's Image and not not Marvel. Not Marvel. Yeah. Image is doing a lot of great stuff yeah, right Image now. Image is doing a lot of great things, and there's a lot of you know we can get into it later in the episode, mm-hmm. but. Uh, there's a lot of comics I wish we could talk about for Image as well, which we'll get to in, in future episodes for sure. Um, but I noticed one thing about this cover, otherwise, there's like this one ship off besides his neck right here, to the, to the left side of his neck, that's not firing off. <laughs> like, it's just going to die. Everybody in that ship's dead. <laughs> they're coasting. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're coasting. coasting. There you go. Yeah, Conserving fuel. <laughs> uh, sorry, so what, uh, what do you have for us, Paul? Yeah, what do you got for us today, Paul? Well, I don't read a ton of comics. In fact, I mean, you know, my comic book uh, exposure lately comes through talking to you guys. Um, but I have been reading just a ton of sci-fi lately. I got myself a, a Nook reader, and yes, like, it's, it's freaking awesome. I love e-ink. I think it's the best way to, to consume books. I tried, I had an iPad for a while, and I tried, you know, reading on that, and the screen was just really uncomfortable. And this Nook, it's... Number one, it's tiny, and number two, it's just really pleasant to look at. It's like reading a regular book. So I've read a ton of stuff in the last year, caught up with, uh, per your suggestion, Ender's Game right. series. Yeah. You like those? I love those. Yeah, cool. Recently finished the Hyperion series, um, which was recommended to me by our, our pal Chris Kwan. Sure. Uh, and those were awesome. Chris, if you're watching, thanks again for the, the recommendation on those. And we're going to need you on this podcast eventually. Absolutely. Um, and then I, when I was... Oh, uh, between Ender's, the Ender series and the Hyperion series, I read uh, all of John Scalzi's Old Man's War series, which I know you read. Yeah, that's a great series. Fantastic. And so at, at Phoenix Comic Con, Scalzi was a guest, and he was part of a, um, a panel on military sci-fi, which is one of my... Anybody who knows me knows I'm a, a huge Stargate nut, which is sort of the, the poster child from uh, television military sci-fi. So I went and checked out um, Scalzi's panel, and he was with a bunch of other artists, uh, authors, including James S.A. Corey, who is actually two guys, Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. Uh, it's kind of interesting that they, it's two authors who, uh, who write under one pen name. Uh, and I really liked the, the things they had to say. Obviously, I was there for Scalzi because um, I was so in his universe at the time, but I, I really, really wanted to check out um, their their series, The Expanse. And so I put Leviathan Wakes in my in my wish list queue on my Nook, and as soon as I finished Hyperion, I picked that up, and I have not been able to stop reading it. It's fucking amazing. Uh, on the Nook, it says it's about 1,000 pages. I'm about 400 pages into it, and I literally don't want to put it down. Like, I'm staying up until the wee hours of the morning because I just don't <laughs> want to put the book down. And the crazy thing is... Um, well, the, the, they're developing a TV series based on this, okay? And what's interesting is if you, like, usually you read a book and you can kind of see how the narrative arc would play out. And something like Ender's Game, you can see how, oh, they could easily have made, you know, a two and a half hour movie out of this. Leviathan Wakes is, and the whole Expanse series, from what I can tell, is very, I think it has the potential to be the, the sci fi uh, Game of Thrones. Because oh, nice. it's that involved. Nice. I mean, it, they, yeah. they really do a great job of building this universe of humans have have uh, stepped off of Earth and have colonized the solar system. We we don't have we don't have star drives. We don't have FTL. We don't have any of that sort of stuff. No wormholes, you know. So it's all about G forces and um, this drug that they call the juice. They they basically when they have to do a high G burn, they pump themselves full of the juice so they don't lose consciousness. Wow. Stuff like that. Um, Who's, uh, who's picking it up? It's Sci-Fi Channel. They've okay. greenlit uh, 10 episode first season. I, I don't know how much of it they're going to do. I mean, I'm, I, I kind of feel like you could do 10 episodes just in what I've read so far, the first half of the book. Hmm. 
what's what's kind of interesting is like if you were to just take it from like let's adapt it to a movie. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where you what you would trim because the first 300 pages or so, maybe even less than that, felt like a two hour, a complete two hour movie. It had a you know inciting incident set up, a build, and then this huge action climax that feels like the end of the book. And then you're like, wait a minute, there's like 600 pages left. What are they doing now? And it just <laughs> keeps building on that. Like the momentum just builds to this this uh, this fever pace, and then it keeps going. The, what's the other thing that's cool is uh, I'm a huge film noir fan, and so the the two protagonists in this book are uh, Jim Holden, who is the captain of sort of this ragtag crew that's left behind after their uh, their ice uh, ice tanker gets destroyed. Their their uh, their job is they go they basically fly out to Saturn and yank icebergs out of the the rings and bring them back to the asteroid belt to like replenish people's water supply. For the that's colonies, really cool. yeah. That's really cool. So, so Holden is uh, Holden's one protagonist, and then the other protagonist is this guy Miller, who is essentially a film noir detective who has grown up in low gravity on a uh, a space station that's inside a hollowed out asteroid called Ceres, and so the book ping pongs back and forth between the two of them, and then they come together, and then they split up again, and it's really an interesting narrative structure, and I can totally see that that's how you would do it if you were writing with a partner like that, where it's like okay, we're gonna break the story together, and then you write Holden, and I'll write Miller, and and basically we'll we'll make sure that we line up at, at every chapter. It's very very cool, and it's also very similar to the way I know George R. R. Martin writes the the Song yeah, of Ice yeah. and Fire, where you have different each chapter is sort of a different protagonist's point of view. It's it's very much like that. So you're in one chapter you're you're seeing things through Holden's eyes, and then another chapter you're seeing things through Miller's eyes, and they're very different guys. They have a very different moral spectrum. Uh, and so it, it, it allows the authors to kind of create these very interesting moral arguments and live in the gray area between these two guys. When did uh, when did this come out? Uh, it's two thousand eight. Is, is this like is this one? Is it a series or is just one? It's a book? series. There's uh, three other books. Okay. Um, Caliban, Caliban's War, Abaddon's Gate, Cibola Burn, and then from what I understand, there's three three more books coming, and then a series of uh, of novellas. So I'm gonna be busy reading for a while. Yeah, I like what you said about you know sci-fi trying to make you can see them making this their game at like sci-fi Game of Thrones because recently sci-fi had a like a press statement or something. They admitted that the last like five years since they changed their name, they, they changed their logo. Oh, you mean when they alienated their entire fan, fan base? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. That they yeah. they're admitting that they messed up. Oh, they yeah, screwed yeah, they, up big time. Yeah, yeah they or were. They became CP. Yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were going for um, bad sci-fi movies as a right. thing. That's what they wanted to be known for is like these really terrible movies that oh, people watch. No, right. And you know we lost Eureka, we lost uh, Battlestar, we lost all these good yeah, shows. We, yeah, we lost Battlestar. They. Yeah, this this is a, a network that built itself on Stargate and Battlestar, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And then what do they do? They can't. They they let Battlestar run out. They cancel Caprica, which could which had the potential to be to be as big as Battlestar if they had let it grow. Mm-hmm. Sure. They cancel Stargate. They yeah they they start pouring money into Sharknado and. Yeah, these things that you know, shit like sure, that. They were fun to watch, but they're not the series that we watched the network for. Right. So they're um, they're trying to go back to that now. That's what I've heard. They're yeah. gonna try. Well, they're launching like five new TV shows. And I guess this is one of them. That's great. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, great. that's really yeah. That's well, there's not enough sci-fi on like good sci-fi on TV right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's really not. I, I've been trying to avoid any sort of press about the series oh, while yeah. I'm reading because yeah. I started. I glanced at an article. Uh, the other day, and one of the, one of the things about the the world that they've built is there's the people that are from the inner planets they call them the inners, mm-hmm. and then there's people that uh, have grown up in low gravity in the asteroid belt, and they call them the belters. And belters are all really tall and thin and lanky, and they have um, they have their own lingo. They have a lot of their body language is hand movements because they basically grow up spending a lot of time in pressure suits where you can't see somebody nodding their head, so they have to like. They don't nod their heads. They do this thing with their hands that is the equivalent of nodding and stuff like that. Um, and I, I glanced at an article, and the title of the article, it was on Daniel Abraham's blog. It was, apparently all belters are not tall. Lessons from casting the Expanse TV series. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't, I don't want to read any of it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to look at anybody's picture. I don't, like, I have a really clear picture of Hill, of uh, Miller and Holden and, and their, their uh, compatriots in my head. And I don't want... At least for now, I don't yeah, want. Don't I don't want to see, see who they're casting. Yeah, no. I don't. Yeah, I don't want it to be ruined. Yeah, I get through the series first. Yeah, for sure. 
Oh, right. it's scary when something you read beforehand gets made into like film or TV yeah. shows. Like right now, I'm kind of scary because my favorite book is in the talks with Fox, and that scares me so much. <laughs> oh, the, the Pat Rothfuss mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a rumor, and then you know, there's, he's not saying anything else on it, but the audience is scared. They don't, yeah, I don't, don't trust yeah. Fox with yeah. that. Never I, trust Fox. Yeah, Fox. Oh, so so weird. So you have the Showtime. Yeah. I think. Um, Let him compete with HBO. I, I kind of have high hopes for uh, for the series. Oh, I, I mean, in spite of it being sci-fi. on sci-fi, uh, I have high hopes. The guys who are uh, running it, I don't their their names have escaped me, um, but they they were involved with uh, Children of Men, which is one of my favorite mm-hmm. sci-fi movies of yeah, the past nice. decade. Yeah, it's a great movie. And uh, the first Iron Man, they were they were oh, that's nice. the best Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No right, um, speaking, there. speaking of that, I guess the next yeah, let's, thing. Let's, let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> back to comics. Uh, and, um, <laughs> back to comics. So, oh, hey. what we didn't finish talking about last week was the lineup that they released at El Capitan yeah, Theater. Yeah, no, we, we complained a little bit on Doctor Strange. I think yeah, that's it. I think we, we managed to talk a little bit about uh, Captain America. And, oh, we did, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, this image is actually funny. I'll bring this up real fast. This is still the, the only image I saw of their little troll where it was Captain America Society. Serpent Society. <laughs> and uh, later they, you know, yeah. they revealed that it was actually Civil War. Nice. But I just thought this was interesting to see. Uh, so real quick, let's jump into this real fast and talk about the next umpteenth years. Uh, what we got? Four, next four years at least that we see here until November 2nd. Or, sorry, five years. May 3rd, 2019 for uh, part two of Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, what Wait, movie are you guys looking forward to the most right now? I'll tell you, right now, I'm excited mm. to see Captain Marvel. I think yeah, that that's going to be really good. It depends on what they bring in with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Because if they introduce some characters there that are going to be in Infinity War, then Infinity War is where I'm looking. Well, yeah, obviously. Right. Uh, I mean, know, I guess that's the climax. Yeah, the, the Avengers whole. movies are the climax well, of each more phase. Of that, I really want to see Warlock. I actually want to see Megas yeah. in a, in a, in, on screen. I don't I, care I really about think that, Thanos. I care more about seeing Megas. I really think that we're going to get Adam Warlock in Guardians 2. I do too. That's... I really feel like that's the way they have to go with that. Uh, introduce him as soon as you possibly can. Uh... Well, they've heard, I mean, they, they already gave us the Easter egg of his cocoon mm-hmm. in the collector's lab. Sure, sure. Uh, or museum or whatever you want to call it. And then um, they've doing... already said that, that they are tweaking um, Peter Quill's parentage. That right. he's not, it's not going to be... Jason of Spartax. Jason yeah. Spartax, yeah. yeah. I just, so, so speculation is that his dad is Adam Warlock. Oh. Uh, that's, what I've, that's what I've read. I, think, well, I mean, however they're doing it, he's going to be in there. Because we got Thanos. You can't have Thanos without Warlock. They're like two sure. sides of a yeah. coin. Yeah. Sure. you got that's the Avatar right. of Death and like the Avatar of Life. Like, you need them both. Yeah, I mean, uh, when they were making Adam Warlock back in, oh God, the 60s, I think, mm. uh, didn't they say that they were basically making a, a Jesus allegory? Like, yeah, he kind of is. Yeah. He, he mm-hmm. dies and comes back to life. He freaking does everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the power of gods, it's it's all kind of there. Because like, nice. if they're following the Guardian's current like storyline, I think you need him, and he's a big part of that, where they go. He's a big part of their future and what eventually ends them and then brings them back together. So sure. yeah. I think we're, we're definitely going to see him in two. Ant-Man, I, I'm excited for. If... If it's anything what I think it's going to be, I mean, yeah, hopefully wait. it's more of a light. Ant-Man's missing. Where's Ant-Man It's at? missing on the screen, yeah. What is oh, this? Yeah. Oh, is Ant-Man technically part of Phase 2 still, I guess? It that totally doesn't make is. sense. Yeah, it would be. Wouldn't it? Yeah. No, because Ant- does Ant-Man come out before Avengers 2? Yeah, I thought no, Ant-Man's, Ant-Man's, the, Ant-Man's the first of Phase the first 3. Of, yeah, yeah, it's the first of Phase yeah. 3, and it's not on here. I guess because it was already announced prior to this. Right. So they didn't need to announce it here. Mm-hmm. Um but Ant Man, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how they do that movie. I'm sad they lost. Uh, what's his face? Edgar Wright. I'm yeah, so sad I was about really that. excited to see. I love Edgar Wright's movies. Um, everything he's done with uh, Simon Pegg. Yeah, and that and those guys over there just yeah. it blows me away. I love his visual storytelling, his visual humor. I think that he would have done what James Gunn did for yeah. Guardians. Right. Um, yeah, I wonder if we're ever gonna get the full story of what happened. Between him and Marvel, I don't, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know, if, I don't know if we will. It's one of those things. Be nice. Yeah. Uh, anybody from Marvel knows the answer to that. Why don't you go ahead and email us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to Guardians Two. Like 
Guardians was my is my favorite movie of the year, for sure. Yeah. Um, right. I love Cap Two. Um, man, this has been the the year of Marvel. It really has in the movies, right? Cap yeah. Two, Guardians. We saw Big Hero Six the other night. Sure, well, yeah, was Big Hero Six was really great. great. Was Thor Two and Iron Man Three at the beginning of uh, this year? Was that this year? No, Thor Two: uh, Dark World was at the end of last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Iron Man 3 before that, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it summer yeah. last year? Yeah, summer yeah. last year, I will say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've been firing on all cylinders for a, for a while. I mean, uh, they haven't made a bad movie. Uh, I, well, mm, in my opinion, yeah. I think Iron Man 2 and have the, sure. the Iron Man 2 comes. Sure, Thor everybody one, always all, everybody always terrible. goes to Iron Man 2 and the first Thor, but those were movies that were more bridges to other movies. Right. Yeah. And they in, they were key in introducing us to certain characters like Iron Man 2 isn't really an Iron Man movie so much as it is. It's a Shield movie. It's a Shield yeah. movie, and it's a it's a Black Widow movie. Right. It's yeah, we do get yeah. That's, Black, when, that's Black when we Widow. get Black Widow. That's when she she kind of like without her, Iron Man dies in in Iron Man Two. Right. Uh, right. You know, we we were talking about the Iron Man Two uh, arc. Uh, the the um, the senator played by Gary Shandling mm-hmm. trying to get the suit. Trying, you know, basically raking Tony over the coals, yeah. right? That's in yeah. two, right? With the hearing and everything. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. He and then, and then yeah. we, you know, spoilers for Captain America two. We find out that he's Hydra, and so you, you were saying, you know, so it, it kind of recontextualizes the whole thing that he was he was just trying to get Tony's tech for Hydra. for Hydra the whole time, and it's like, well, that's actually pretty brilliant. It, right. it really recontextualizes all of Iron Man 2 in a way. I, right. I, I believe that was like a thought later down the line, though. Oh, yeah. Definitely, I, but it was a really cool way to tie it together. Yeah. I, I think I, it was probably just out of necessity of, we want to show that Hydra has infiltrated high levels of government, and who, who have we introduced that is in the government at a mm. high level, and it's this character, and then somebody went, oh, well, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if it was so much a, like, you know... A retcon, as it was, just clever, clever writing to kind right. of tie the world together better. Right. Just like um, you get Agent Stillwell, who ends up yeah. being a Hydra agent, and right. you get all of those like those Marvel one shots that they did uh, leading up to Avengers and and you know right. his little coffee with Agent Coulson. Like you, you get to kind of enjoy this character before he. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would it would be interesting to go back and rewatch those. With you know, with it in mind that oh, he's Hydra. Right. And see, yeah. see if that changes your read on those one shots. Yeah, that's something you know? that oh, might have to do that. For yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about the preview, the little Mar- Marvel preview of them trying to lift Thor's hammer? Do you guys enjoy that? Oh yeah, that it was, was cute. It, it was really nice. The I, obviously the best part is when we see like Cap just nudge it a little bit, and you see Thor's face like uh. <laughs> And then, you know, he's smiling like, oh, okay, yeah. That's I better. like that War Machine was there because I'm hoping – uh, have we seen anything on him in Avengers 2 outside of that? Was, no. Have they said anything that he's going to be in there? Uh, I we haven't seen Fel- it. Uh, but... Falcon might be in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to get Falcon. We're going to get War Machine. I'm... We're going to get all these. I like Tony Stark and uh, War Machine's, like, attitude together, the way they play off. Like when they're trying to lift the hammer. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm... Are you even pulling? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on my team? Are you on my team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, that they're uh, Don Cheadle and RDJ uh, mm-hmm. just from the very first moment in, in Iron Man 2 when Cheadle's Cheadle walks the in. Best. Yeah, when he walks in, he goes, I'm here, deal with it. Well, because they, they, <laughs> well, the thing is, they just Move lost, uh, I can't think of his name, the other actor. Terrence, Terrence Howard. Howard. They just lost Terrence Howard. He said, I'm here, it's me, deal with it. And that's right. his first line. You're yeah, like, All it's right. just like, yeah, I accept it. Like, thank you, Don Cheadle. You make everything better. <laughs> Yeah, they have they have great chemistry together. What I, I think the the uh, the scene where they're lifting the hammer is kind of like a bookend to the shawarma scene at the end of Avengers One. Oh yeah, right. That it's like they go through Avengers and they they go through this experience together, and then it ends, and they are family at the end. The fact that they're all sitting around like just breaking bread together, you know, that whole sure, that whole yeah. familial kind of thing, and then we see them. I, I have to assume that 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 scene. That, that we've seen of Avengers 2 of them messing around with the hammer is really close to the beginning of the movie. That it's like, 
oh, remember remember how that you know we built that relationship in the last movie, or, or all these relationships now here they are in full bloom. They're all friends. They're you know well, they're, they're teasing each other. They're screwing around. They're partying. They're having a good time. And then oh shit, the hits the, the hits gonna fit the chan. <laughs> 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 Ultron's gonna tear him apart. That's gonna be a big part exactly. of the movie. He's gonna put them against each other. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's like what Loki did in the first Avengers. I think yeah, we're gonna well, get right. them fighting each other. Well, there was we also that. Let's, let's go ahead. Since we're talking about teasers already, there was a, that other teaser that kind of came out. That was really a teaser more for Civil War than yeah. it was for Avengers mm-hmm. Two. It was happens in Avengers Two, and it's uh, it's when Tony and Steve are like cutting wood together, basically, and we find out that that Maximoff kid. Scarlet Witch uh, gives everybody visions, and they all see different things. And Thor runs off and and does whatever he do, he's doing. And oh, where was I going with that? Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a setup for civil it's war. Yeah, that, it's, it's a war. setup for the fact that they're gonna that the the team is gonna fracture. Right. Yeah. It, it's a definitely yeah. a setup for that that split that has to happen to mm-hmm. get us to civil war, um, which should be really good. Uh, obviously, they're going to go a different route in Civil War than the Superhero Registration Act. They'll do something similar. Yeah, it's going to be a Civil War here. We're still going to get that whole separation. And people think we don't have enough heroes, but we're getting more uh, TV shows, not just movies. We're getting the Daredevil TV yeah, show. So isn't Hulk getting something? So let's talk about the fact that Marvel is not only giving us a joint cinematic universe, but they're doing a really great job of giving us the TV universe as well that's tying into it with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, talking about Civil War and yep. these two. Um, so it, it, they really do a good job of tying in with the, the TV universe as well, with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then coming in January, we're getting Agent Carter. Agent Carter, yeah. Uh, and we've already and seen then, a teaser for that. Right. We during, see that, during that Marvel 75th anniversary special that we watched. Yeah. That, yeah. That, so we get all of that together. Ooh, we got Edward Jarvis in that. Yeah. Really nice we to see. get more Howard Stark. We, we need the real Jarvis. Right, yeah, the... The, jar, yeah. the, the, the human who was the template for Tony's mm-hmm. first AI. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I guess we're going to get an answer as to whether or not Jarvis is a true AI in Avengers 2 when he becomes a Vision. That's right. Yeah. I keep forgetting Vision's going to be a thing. Yeah, Vision's going to be a thing. Yeah. Prepare for that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you kind of have to have that relationship between Vision and, and Wanda. Like that's really like a really strong relationship in the Avengers. They're probably I think they're gonna hint at it in two, but we're not gonna get oh, much we're not of gonna it see at all that. right oh, away. We no. won't see it at all, I think. In, they'll they'll in two. nod at it for the fans sure. and then maybe we'll they'll develop it later. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say that Jarvis is an AI in that he, he is intelligent, he's he can he makes decisions without user input. Right? the way he interacts with Tony in Iron in Man the Iron three. Man movies, yeah, and he particularly in Iron suits, Man yeah. three, yeah, it, he does. He is autonomous, but I don't think he's self-aware. And I think that's what I think that's what the the Avengers: Age of Ultron teaser showed us is Tony builds an AI that becomes self-aware and says, "Screw you guys! Right. I don't need you. I'm right. superior." So, do you think yeah. Ultron might make Jarvis like change Jarvis a little bit? That's how he becomes a Vision. You know, it's possible, or or Tony upgrades Jarvis between movies mm-hmm. to become Vision. You know, gives him a body, upgrades him, and then goes, eh, "I think I can do more." And he goes that one extra step. See, I think it's I think it's going to be different because I think it's going to harken back to the fact that Vision was created by Ultron. So I think oh, okay. what yeah. I think what we're going to get is Ultron's going to become self-aware. He's going to wake up and he's going to basically be like, "You have this AI here." That's not really self-aware yet. You've been constraining. He's gonna look him. at Jarvis as a slave. Yeah, he's yeah, gonna look okay. at Jarvis as a slave. He's gonna free him, give him a body, and be like, "Hello, my son. Help me kill off the Avengers." Oh, I see. Uh, that then, makes sense. Yeah, you know, spoiler sense. alert: he's not going to. Because <laughs> he's the Vision. Oh, uh, that, that's a guess. <laughs> sure, that's a guess. I mean, they do change things all the time in the cinematic universe, right? Um, but they better make him good. Uh, I mean, we get him in the poster fighting in the background. You know, there wasn't a spotlight of him, but in the sure, background, you see him right. fighting, playing the Ultrons. Sure. He's going to be good. Yeah. He, yeah, he'll be eventually going to be good. <laughs> um, but it looks like uh, also going back to that Adventures Two trailer, uh, we get the fact that Wanda and 
Pietro might not be so good in the beginning. No, they're yeah, they're, they looks like they're taking orders from Ultron. Yeah, it very much looks like they got his back quite literally behind him. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, going into this. It's well, they were in prison somewhere at the end of what was it? Uh, no. Strucker, right? Didn't didn't Baron von Strucker have him? Yeah, what movie was that? Uh, that's yeah. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah we yeah. see them. Yeah, the tweens. Yeah. yeah. So. They can get so Ultron's I think is going to play a hand in breaking them out of that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was what I was thinking. There's something about the vibe of the scenes that you you see them with Ultron. It just feels like sort of this, you know, vaguely Eastern European city that they're in. Mm-hmm. It just it just feels like that's that's what they're that's what they're, they're trying to tell us. You know, I, I look at um, Marvel trailers as not necessarily just the highlights of the movie. They are, I, I think they've been really really brilliant about planting Easter eggs within their trailers. For the the diehards, for the for the real yeah. you know, born and bred Marvel fans, to pick apart and get excited about, and so I I don't think there's a single frame in that trailer that isn't with that intent. You know that yes, they are trying to sell the movie to the public, yeah. but but they are st- even more they're trying to get guys like us excited sure. about and they're doing a good what's job. there, you know, yeah. and, and getting us to talk about it and speculate about it, and here we are weeks later. Yeah, still, still speculating still, still talking talking about it. About it. Yeah. yeah, and when they when they give us the next trailer, we'll do the same thing. Right. So let's move on to the casting decision they made uh, for Black Panther, which I don't have his name up here. Yeah, I mean, I Chadwick had, Boseman. I Chadwick Boseman. Done much research Thank on him. Um, like, what's he? What's he been in? Man? So two really movies. He did two biopics recently. He did the Forty Two biopic, uh, Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Okay. Yeah. And then he did uh, was it Get On Up, which was the biopic James for James Brown. Oh. Yeah. And I haven't seen either of those, unfortunately. I but, have I. I, uh, I heard great things about the you know, James yeah. Brown yeah. movie. My so, buddy Steve Briscoe saw it, and he, you know, he's he's an actor and a writer, and he picks things apart just as much as we do. And yeah, he liked it a lot. Yeah, so oh, it was, was it's interesting one. to hear, you know, the little interaction they had at the El Captain Theater where he gets to come out, and you know, Tony and oh, Tony and Steve. RDJ and Chris, Chris Evans. Evans kind of, you know, stand on either side of him and uh, like, you know, choose a side. And he's just like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, because Black Panther's his own man. He's a king of a country. He looks really, how old is he? He looks young. Yeah, to be he Black does. Panther. That's, that's the only thing is that he looks super young to be the ruler of his own country. Like, well, that's, that's the thing, though, is, you know, he becomes the ruler of Wakanda because his, his, oh, his father's yeah, murdered. That's true. Okay. So, right. Um, it's interesting to see. I have they mentioned Wakanda at all? I don't think no. they mentioned uh, well, probably I think they somewhere have. in like a text file that flashed across yeah, the screen. Yeah, I think they have probably. a little bit. Um, Maybe in uh, Cat or Iron Man, um, not Iron Man, Cat One. Yeah, probably Cat uh, One. I, Maybe. Yeah, and I want to say we've seen a flash of something about Wakanda on Agents of Shield in oh, that in that yeah. data download. Oh, we definitely that, saw that, some uh, Coulson got from Fury. Yeah, 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 yeah. we definitely did. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Him step into that role though, and kind of take a, take charge of it. Marvel's not done a bad job casting. No, they haven't done a bad job yet. So you know, they did such a good on Hulk. They did it twice. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> it took them a few times with Hulk, but they, they finally got it. Uh, I, I, Norton wasn't was, terrible. Norton wasn't a bad. I liked I liked Norton Hulk. for for that movie. I thought he was mm-hmm. good sure, for that yeah. movie. I I think that. Ruffalo is a better banner. Ruffalo is a great banner for yeah. the Avengers. It's it's almost like like Bill Bixby was a really good banner for his TV series, the, the Hulk TV series. I'm going to date myself here, but the, the, I grew up on the the Bill Bixby Lou Ferrigno Hulk, <laughs> and I loved it because it was I mean it was action, but it also had heart. Um, and Bill Bixby worked great for that banner in the same way that I think. Because they were going in that same vein for the, the Ed Norton Hulk. I mean, they even they even cribbed the the sad piano theme. Right. Like yeah. the, every week, it would end with Bill Bixby <laughs> walking out of the town that he had gone in, and he was like, da, 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 da. and it was like super sad. And they, like every week, it ended on this downer. And like all the friends he had made, he had to leave behind because the Hulk fucking ruins everything right? so, <laughs> so um so and they played that piano theme during the ed morton hall mm-hmm. when he's like walking mm-hmm. in the rain in like costa rica or something with like pants that don't fit because he hulked out yeah right. um but that hulk i don't think works in the in the avengers you know i think that the dynamic is banner is a different character when he's written as 
the solo man on the run versus the guy who is partners and and is respected by Tony and, and the rest right, of the yeah, team. Absolutely. You know, it, it, he's a different character. Yeah. So this is the oh. first concept we got uh, at the El Captain Theater right. of Black Panther, which is just uh, yeah, flip that over. Nice. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, amazing concept art. I can't wait to see him don this costume and literally beat the crap out of everybody. Um, yeah. Plus, it's going to yeah. be cute if we get a little. Uh, what's that shield made out of? Oh, it's a vibranium mixture. <laughs> like, oh yeah, a funny story. Everything you see metal on me is vibranium. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I. It's like, I don't know, Batman and Daredevil well, got together and that's, that was, you know, <laughs> fought the Predator and they just put their costumes together. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's always been my character. Like, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's cool. I'm just saying. It's, it's, no, it's not a, an big, American flag on no, the chest. No, no. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah. inevitably, we got to talk about the DC universe, and I'm I'm more of a DC guy growing up. Like I read I read a lot more Batman. Although I read Spider Man when I was a kid, but like when I got back into collecting comics um, in college, I was diehard Batman guy. So I was much more tied into the the DC universe, and uh, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. I don't even know if that's the right word. Um, so yeah, this is their. I just don't know enough. Slate. I don't know. I don't know we what can't. they're doing. I don't know what DC's doing. Well, we can speculate, and that's kind of what we're here to do right, today. Right. Um, and first things first, let's talk about just the first movie on this list, Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is taking place after Batman vs Superman, which hasn't happened yet, so we have no idea right. what's coming in with that. Um, and there's a lot of controversy there with the casting, and DC's yeah, not tr- been as good with their casting as Marvel has. Has it been Correct. confirmed for Jared Leto? Is that confirmed? No, no, it's just no speculation. Okay. So yeah, there's been no casting confirmations yet that I know of uh, as of this issue uh, for Suicide Squad. But you know, we got Jared Leto as the Joker being rumored. Uh, Margot Robbie for uh, Harley Quinn. Right. She was in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. They they keep throwing out Tom Hardy. Which I think is, well, I mean, Tom Hardy's great, but I, I think that's kind of weird. Like, he just was Bane. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, he, he was just, just Bane. Bane. Like, was, put him on the shelf for a little bit and bring him Bane. back another time. Yeah, you know? yeah, bring him back later down the yeah. road. Uh, but I'm excited to see Because who... nobody wants to see him do Bane again. No, no. <laughs> no. You, you only get one chance to fuck it up. I mean, and Marvel that was did, it. Um, I guess that wasn't their movie. I said we had Human Torch come back like four years later to play Cap. Again, yeah, yeah but like you said. Everyone kind of forgets it. Because he's such a good actor, uh, he, he didn't. He and did we're just gonna pretend that none of that Fantastic Four stuff. Happened. No, I'm gonna believe yeah. it happened and that the new one's not. Have you heard about Victor uh, Something Doom being a blogger? Yeah, yeah, we we're did. on DC <laughs> right now. Let's we saw sorry, that. I'm sorry. Yeah, we saw that. Let's not go into <laughs> yeah. Sony. Uh, yeah. Is it Sony that has it's Sony? No, that's Fox. No, it's Fox. Oh, it's yeah, Fox. Fox. Sony is Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. Fox and not trusting Fox. Well, All right. yeah, there you go. Well, right, so anyway. Suicide Squad. <laughs> Suicide Squad. It's like the Dirty Dozen. In the DC universe, yeah. a bunch of bunch of really bad characters get recruited for a, a suicide mission and get a chance at redemption. Although, how you give the Joker a chance at redemption? Yeah, is, no, you don't think Joker and Harley. Maybe Harley. Maybe it's Harley. Oh, I also don't know how you do. We were talking about this the other day. I don't know how you do Joker and Harley and their dynamic in a DC universe that has been said is joke free. Yeah, I think like they're the, gonna they're gonna retcon that entire idea. I, they have to. They have to at, at a certain point because, you know, I mean, her name. Uh, for, don't don't even get me started on her name, Doctor Harleen Quinzel. Like that's just completely fucking stupid. But um, <laughs> but well, yeah, all the, naming in comics in books comics are just, is stupid, yeah, right? Stupid. But you know, I don't know her whole like oh, Mister J. Like it just like it just feels like a complete dissonance with. The seriousness that they're going for with the, right. the Man of Steel and obviously um, uh, Batman v Superman, which we'll see how much they keep to that in Batman v Superman, which yeah. is going to be I think it's going to be easier in that film. But in a film like Suicide Squad, where you have to have these joking characters, right? I feel level. like with a franchise where you're going to throw in the Flash and you're going to throw in Harley Quinn, like a joke-free universe is just a bad idea. Yeah, yes, yeah. you it's need not, to have yeah. some lighthearted comedy in there. Yeah. So I, I mean. I think it's pretty crazy that they've they've laid out all these movies up to 2020 before we even get 
Batman v Superman. Yeah, they're like really they're like a lot of money. They're so uh, the the reaction to Man of Steel was so mixed. It's not like Marvel Phase One where they did Iron Man and everybody loved Iron Man and they were like, yeah. well, we're going full bore. You know, we we've got this movie and this movie and this movie and it's building to the Avengers. This, they're like, well, we had Man of Steel, and it. Uh, uh, I came in at Man of Steel, and not it. really. I was, I wasn't moved. Yeah, I was like, all right, it was better I, than I have anything to defend, else done. I have to defend Superman. Man of Steel a little bit because not being a Superman fan, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I hate Superman, but I loved Man of Steel. Like to me, that's the definitive. Well. One of the definitive it's too stories. Much building for, crashing. Like it's too many bombs. Well, yeah. Buildings. Well, that that's a whole other conversation because to me, modern blockbusters have way too many, way too much city destruction mm-hmm. for my taste. Like, like how many times do we need to play out echoes of 9/11? Like we can't even do a Star Trek movie without crashing, you know, the fucking killer Enterprise giant thing into into Enterprise. into San Francisco, you know. Right. And even I mean even the Marvel movies have it. You know, they we blew up the whole a whole planet in Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, <laughs> but but what I'm saying is you know, I'm talking Star Trek into darkness. Yeah, they, I know, they I know. crash they that, crash you know, right, yeah. the killer prize the as killer, they call it. Yeah. The killer yeah, prize. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, I mean so yeah, that's a whole other conversation. It just like people they need to move the hell away from let's destroy three three to twelve city blocks and have people running away. I mean, it but was I still think, entertaining fight. But yeah, it's Superman entertaining, but it also sets up what they're rumored to be doing with things like Batman vs Superman and, and onward, which is the fact that basically in this universe, Batman's existed for like thirty plus years, but he's under the radar the whole time, and which now he crazy. has to yeah, which is yeah, super, another conversation. Weird. But but essentially, it's because of ba- uh, because of Superman destroying all of Metropolis, we have to. Have Batman step in and like, hey, you need to kind of not do that. That's you're trying to be the good guy, but right. you just destroyed an entire city. Right. Like you need to be like probably trained properly. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's one of the big problems that a lot of people have. Uh, and we've talked about Superman. Why you don't like Superman is that he typically is portrayed to be a god. He's infallible. He does. He always does the right thing. He always has every situation completely in hand. There's no way always to be out. He's right. a Boy Scout. Yeah. There's no way to be character. Arc, yes. Right. Super Boy Scout. <laughs> and um, that's what a lot of people's criticism of Man of Steel was, was that he screwed up. He let people, innocent people die. He killed Zod. Right. That's supposed to be against his code. And to me, it's like, well, we've never seen a Superman who didn't have his shit together. You know? I mean, yeah. this was his first outing. He's barely understanding his powers. He barely knows how to fly. That's right. He's, right. Started, you know? he's been flying for he like... He learned to jump, and then he started flying, and then he went right to Zod. Right. Yeah. So he has, he, you know, he, he's kind of like, oh, I'm going to protect. Oh, crap, I broke it. <laughs> <Right? laughs> you know, because he doesn't yeah. know his own strength. And, and sure. I think the next movie, and, and if he gets another solo movie, it's going to be about him kind of codifying that, that, uh, that behavior that we now come to, we've come to expect from Superman in the comics. That he doesn't kill, that he, he does the right thing, that he makes the hard choices, that he... He will sacrifice himself before he'll let other people get hurt. You know, that sort of thing. And I think that's what we're going to get with, like, I think that's what Batman's going there to do. I think Batman's going to be the mentor-type figure there. Like, here's, like, the code of conduct that yeah. I have. Yeah. And, but that's completely upside down and backwards from the way it is in the comics. Sure. Because if it, we, Zack Snyder claims to be taking a lot of inspiration from The Dark Knight Returns, but The Dark Knight Returns is all about the, the fact that Bruce will make the tough calls and do the things that that are in the morally gray area that Clark won't do. So much so that Clark becomes a pawn of the the U.S. government in that Dark Knight Returns future. Right. And that's what they 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 come into direct conflict because of that. So it's like they're coming at it from the opposite direction, which is really really weird. I also question. On the one hand, I love that we're not getting another Batman origin story because if I never see Thomas yeah. and Martha Wayne fucking die in an alley again. It will be too soon, right? Like, right? We don't need to see that anymore. And the, uh, Gotham did it again. And the pearls. <sighs> yeah. String of pearls. Thank you, Frank Miller. Yeah, thanks like, for that. Yeah. Um, now everybody has to crib that every time they do it. Every time. Even Tim Burton did. Yep. Even Christopher Nolan did. Yep. Um, but we never need to see the Batman origin story again. I just, like, Batman's been operating for 20 or 30 years. He's gone through three Robins already. Like, when is Dick Grayson going to get any freaking respect? Right. Yeah, like, when is he getting any any respect? Because he 
he's an awesome character who grows into Nightwing, and I, they need to do Nightwing. They have to. They they really have to do Nightwing in this this DCU. And yet we don't see any implication. The, there's no there. mention of Nightwing, and so and the the more the biggest part of the Nightwing character is that he was mentored by Bruce, and him and Bruce have the falling out, and then him and Bruce have this strained relationship, and they come to respect each other. He fin- Bruce finally comes to respect him as an adult and as his own man later. But you, how do you do that arc if you never set him up as Robin? Well, we never, we're never we not going to get a Darkwing movie if Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers keeps uh, rebooting Batman. He's been Batman's been rebooted more than any other like superhero character. Yeah, you're right. You get a new Batman movie every two or three years. Right. Yeah, new Essentially, Batman. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and the Nolan things that we're not three seeing here was the same same Batman. At least he went three movies. Yeah, sure. And the thing we're not seeing here is that the the they're gonna have untitled and unannounced Superman and Batman movies that are littered throughout this thing, right? An undetermined amount. I don't like that we're seeing like a Wonder Woman standalone, an Aquaman standalone. I don't think either of those characters can do a standalone. Oh, I think I Wonder think. Woman can. I don't think that they cast it right. But Shazam, yeah. maybe. I think him and Black Adam. I think movie. I think if they did a, hopefully they can do a Wonder Woman movie, um, with a little bit of a period thing to it since she is immortal. Mm-hmm. Right. They could yeah, do that's true. they could yeah, do that's like the 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 Linda Carter series, which is to me the gold standard for sure. Wonder Woman for casting and and for uh, obviously it's cheesy and it's seventies and all that stuff. But Linda Carter is Wonder Woman, you know, like she jumped right off the page. Um, but the first season of that show is set in World War II. Like, she's fighting the Nazis. And then the <laughs> second season, they're like, oh, it's the 70s. Sure. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. And she, now she's fighting neo-Nazis in America, and that's it. The only thing they... I don't know if they ever explained how S- Steve... No, it's not Steve Rogers. That's Captain... The, the guy, the, her love interest, he came forward in time, too. I don't think they explained that. But anyway, they have an opportunity to do a Wonder Woman story that spans... Some different eras, yeah. Um, so that could be that could be interesting, and they could do something. Uh, obviously, they're not they don't want to repeat the arc that we've just seen with Captain America and the Marvel Universe, but they they could they can do some really interesting stuff with her. Aquaman, I agree. Like, there's only so much you can do. I think you can do a lot yeah. with Aquaman, especially if you're if you think about like uh, what was it Flashpoint Paradox, mm-hmm. where they had him the, uh, the folks going. Himself? No, no, no that, was, that was, that was Flashpoint Flash Paradox was when yeah. it was like him versus like the entire above uh, water like world. Like he was trying to lead the Atlanteans against the world in war because I think wasn't he? I think he was like in love with Wonder Woman at the time. Wonder Woman killed his queen. Oh, that's what it was. Wonder yeah. Woman killed his queen. Wow. Yeah, Wonder yes. Woman kills his queen. Uh, I've only ever seen the, the animated movie of it. Like, I didn't. I'm, I haven't seen. I haven't read any of that. I'm not saying there's not enough content for them to do a standalone. It's just I'm, I was really happy to see Batman vs Superman as the introduction for their Batman character because I'm tired of standalone origin story movies. Right. I hate. Sure. I don't want to see another origin story. I don't know if this is going to be origin story because I think we're going to get an Aquaman cameo in be Batman vs Superman. Yeah. You know, Wonder That's Woman's gonna obviously going to be in Batman vs Superman. Well, yeah, we're going to so Aquaman yeah, and Batman I don't. Or, Oh, right, and we're obviously getting Justice League, the beginning of the Justice League, before, before Flash, Flash, and, Flash and Aquaman, and that and that's the weird thing is this Justice League Part One, Justice League Part Two, are they just two separate standalone Justice League movies, or are they a connected? Like it's said, a direct sequel. Like we're gonna cliffhang at the end of Justice League Part One and then resolve it in Justice League Part Two. So then, does that make the Flash and Those Aquaman movies flashbacks, origin stories? Side oh, stories. Oh if they do that, I will be completely upset. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, obviously, you that. can do that in comics, where you can have, you know, in in the Justice League comic, you know, they've been, they've all been captured by Lex Luthor and the Joker, and they're, you know, being hurled into the sun, and you know, come back next month and read the conclusion. Oh, and in the meantime, there's an Aquaman title and a Flash title. Yeah, you should assume it's happening at different times. Different, different sure. times, right? right. Yeah. You can do that in comics. It's a little hard to, harder to do that in movies. And have people stomach it and deal with it. Right. Let's talk about this, uh, the fact that this Flash, that we have another ask you about Flash. This. How do you guys feel? Have you guys seen anything with him? Uh, Ezra, Ezra Miller? Ezra Miller? Ezra? No. He was no. in uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was great in that. that. He was absolutely great in that movie. Absolutely. But 
he's a little young. Like he's about the same age as the TV show Flash right now. If not that, if not the TV show Flash is older, I can't think of the actor's name for that either. Uh, Gus. Oh, man. Grant Gustin. Yeah, they're Grant, both, they're yeah. like, they look yeah, the same Gustin. age. They both look really young to be Flash, and that we have a different Flash with this universe. That's a young kid. I, I actually, I actually want to get into that because I think that they're <sighs> DC is either being incredibly stupid mm-hmm. or incredibly brilliant. Batman, Batman. Batman. We're gonna yeah. skip all. Batman. We've all seen his images. Yeah. We're gonna uh, skip. All right. Well, let's actually, well, let's, uh, let's start start here because we watched we universe, watched the pilot yeah. of Gotham. And it's obviously completely disconnected from everything sure. we've seen before and everything that's coming, right? It's 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 set in the here and now, right? They have cell phones, so all it, so it's not thirty years ago or whatever when, or what would have to be forty years ago or yeah. whatever, right? When ba- when Ben Affleck's Batman would have had right. his origin story. So it's clearly set on a different Earth in a different universe, right? right. Flash, the TV show. Is clearly set in a different universe than Flash. than the cinematic universe, and here's the thing: I I haven't seen Flash yet. Uh, I've been meaning to catch up. There's only so many TV shows I can watch at any given time, but um, but I wanted to talk about this. I, I read this article on, on Screen Rant. It's called "The Flash Premiere: 26 Easter Eggs You Might Have Missed." It was from October 14th. And the last Easter egg, they went through a whole bunch of different things with it. The last Easter egg was Flash Missing Vanishes in Crisis, April 25th, 2024. So it's a, it's a newspaper from 10 years in the future that they found or that appears in the pilot of Flash. So that makes me start thinking Crisis on Infinite Earths, okay? Like DC's big tentpole Infinity War type storyline from the 80s when they had the entire multiverse being threatened they killed off Power Girl they killed off all of the the Earth 2 uh, you know Silver Age or Golden Age heroes um, you know they had different versions of Superman different versions of Batman meeting and fighting together they could be totally brilliant and setting up Crisis on Infinite Earths that's going to tie together all of their TV and movie properties across a multiverse or they could be completely fucking clueless. <laughs> right. Jerry Stiles. <laughs> right. Uh, Jerry Stiles on that one. But it makes sense because, like, so Arrow and Flash, the TV mm. shows right now, are existing in their own, you know, universe their own together. Universe on the same network. On the same network. So they're, they're together. Gotham's over here. It's the it's Bastard Stepchild. That, on its other network. On its other network. Right. And then we have this whole, we'll call it the Man of Steel cinematic universe for now. Right. That is, you know, going on with that we just looked at. But the thing is, is if we go back real fast to that list, Shazam, even though it's on this list as being in this cinematic universe, has already been confirmed that it doesn't it's a exist. Different, it's a different universe. Yeah. Right. It's, oh, it's, okay. it's another different universe where we're going to have. So it's like, what exactly, you know, what exactly are they doing here? I think you're right. I think it's a great way for them to take all of these universes. And bring them to the big screen. Right. So we get, you know, Stephen Amell, uh, you know, our Arrow. We get uh, TV Flash and Movie Flash together. Yeah. They get, could they could bring back Brandon Routh as Superman. Yeah. So they, could fly, they could fucking have a computer generated Christopher Reeve as Superman. Give uh, they Tom could bring Welling that, a they chance. Could, yeah, Tom Welling could be, could yeah. be Superman from another universe. They could bring Christian Bale back for a cameo. They could have Joseph Gordon Levitt bring, bring him be, back. Be, the yeah, Batman on this, where, on this other going earth. somewhere. Bring that back. Exactly. Yeah. They could do that. So they could have their cake we could and have it too. We could have a Darkwing. Or um, Night, Nightwing. Nightwing. We yeah. could have a Nightwing. Not, not yeah. Darkwing. Dark, yeah, I know. Darkwing Duck. Darkwing, 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 Darkwing Duck. Duck. <laughs> oh my god. We gotta talk about Darkwing Duck. <laughs> not today, no, no, but we, we will talk about Darkwing Yeah, Darkwing we could Duck. have a, like, you know, JJL showing up as Nightwing. Yeah. That would or, be, or just as Batman. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, he was right, yeah, he was supposed to be that path. He was supposed to be taking the mantle of Batman. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be they they have a lot of opportunity to do something that is. that is that rivals what they're what Marvel is doing with Infinity War. Mm-hmm. If they would be huge. do it right, and it, and there's a whole lot of moving parts that all have to be continuing. You know, that, that's assuming that this Flash series is going to run for ten years. That well, Arrow is still going to be on. Or well, that I, don't we'll have it, just I, don't, I don't think it needs to even run for ten years. I think there's a good chance years. of it if you look at. What Smallville did, right, uh, mm-hmm. and that's the model they're going off right. of. They're clear, and they're clearly aiming right at the same demographic. Yeah, they're, they're clearly doing that. So, I mean, if Supernatural's anything to say, WB can run a show forever. Yeah, yeah. Like, they won't let a show die. They, if they yeah. don't want it to die. Right. Yeah. 
as long as there's a fan base there. Yep. And absolutely. We're talking Flash about, and Arrow has a fan, fan base. Arrow yeah, has I mean, great, I've been big, watching Flash, and Flash is amazing. Uh, the visual effects work, every time he does his, like, running, I just, I'm a fan of everything they're doing mm-hmm. on both of those shows. I haven't caught up fully on Arrow yet. Uh, I still need to catch up no. on season three, but uh, I'm in love with it. I think it's great. So when this happens, if this does happen, is this going to spawn a reboot of the DC Universe in you know, 2020, whatever? They put these yeah, out? in 2024, absolutely. Well, yeah, because yeah, they're going to like, think about that for Marvel. Like, eventually, uh, we're not going to, like, um, RGL's not going to play want to play Tony Stark. Right. And they're not going to want to play those RGL, characters RGL, anymore. RGL, yeah, RGL, RGL, RGL. sorry. Too uh, many acronyms. I've been saying JJL yeah. before now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Robert Gordon Rob- Lovett. Robert Gordon. <laughs> 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 All right, so. Yeah, but right. Sure. Well, I, I had actually floated that idea to, to Jace in a conversation months ago. I was talking about how, like, if they had, it, it, and, and Marvel has, as a as a, an entity, they have some of the biggest cojones in the in the entertainment industry right now. The stuff that they have been pulling off, like Guardians, is a great example. Um, but if they really, really wanted to show the, the entertainment world that they had a pair, they would actually let Thanos basically erase the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe in Infinity War yeah. and just start over. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wait, you know that thing that we've been building up for the past right. 10 years or so? Yeah. Thanos wins. Thanos wins, and then we get a whole new Marvel Cinematic Universe with new actors, and they just re- they just restart the whole thing. Yeah. Though that would probably <laughs> make a lot of people mad. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, not for this episode. I'll have to compile some stuff. But I'm actually building a theory that Marvel's about ready to blow up their whole like comic universe right now. Like I'm pr- like six one six is in danger right now in the Marvel universe. In oh my, in my yeah, opinion, it's, yeah. With the uh, the Secret War, they just the new Secret War yeah, now. The, the, the uh, all the Spider Man stuff, Spider Verse going on. What's yeah. going on in the Ultimate Universe? Like they're getting ready to do something to that universe. So I would I can imagine it's going to tie in with these movies. Yeah. Yeah, we're a good chance. Oh, hey, here's our list. Okay. So, yeah, this is the the big list of all the superhero movies. And I got this off of uh, the Comics Alliance. Oh, if you haven't seen Big Hero 6, go watch that. Oh, yeah. Go see that yeah, movie. Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Great. It's great. Good thing. It's n- <laughs> If you know Big Hero 6 from the Marvel Universe, mm-hmm. they're different. Yeah, it's, you can but expect it. But let's face it. It's a more. Disney movie, first and foremost. Yeah. I mean, definitely. it doesn't even have the Marvel logo at the beginning of it. But it does have uh, a, a nice Stan Lee nod. Sure. I'm not going to say yeah. any more than that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Just go see it. <laughs> so, yeah, we got uh, everything from Age of Ultron, Ant Man there, uh, the Deadpool movie coming out. I'm going to skip, skip over Fantastic <laughs> Four. I skipped one there. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about that yeah. one. Uh, Batman vs. Superman. I mean, we've, we've kind of touched on yeah. all of these. Um, oh, we haven't touched on anything in the X Men so far. Oh, I can't wait for Unknown Movie. Unknown Marvel Unknown movie. movie. Yeah. It's a good series. It's so good. Hopefully they don't ruin it. Yeah. Oh, freaking Lego Batman. That's that's gonna be awesome. The Lego movie was fantastic. And more I more of had a to see more that. of uh, of Will Arnett as Lego Batman. That's that's awesome. He's fantastic. Will Arnett as anything, uh, just yeah. as a horseman. It's proven. Oh, Bojack oh, Horseman. Right. I was like, what are you oh, so talking good. about? Yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't seen Bojack Horseman, get Netflix yeah. for that show. Yeah. It's amazing. So good. And if you haven't seen the Lego movie, who do you think is going to be this female lead Spider-Man spinoff? If you, uh, let's with what's going on in the Spider Verse right now. Oh, that's going to be the Aunt May movie. Aunt May. Oh, the What If Aunt May Spider-Man movie? No, just Aunt May alone. Just that's the latest rumor. They're doing a young Aunt May movie. Oh, and she's going to be you're a kidding. spy. So it's basically it's basically Sony going, hey, we should do something like that Agent Carter thing. What do we have? Wow. What do we have from from Spy- Spider Verse? Sony just yeah, go home, Sony. You're drunk. You are obviously <laughs> drunk. You need to stop now. <laughs> just let Spider Man go back to Marvel so they can do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Flash. Yeah. Another unknown X Men movie. Venom Carnage movie for Sony. I do. Uh, I am. I am actually for what Sony's doing. That they're trying to make more <laughs> movies in that universe. Cause that's all they got. Oh well, yeah, that's right. You know, they're trying. Uh, Fox, Fox has been trying with X Men and kind of hit and missing. They're, they hit on Wolverine at least. Well, the uh, third one, no, the Wolverine. The Wolverine was yeah. good. The Wolverine was was pretty good, and I think that with the last X Men Days of Future Past, I think they're starting down the right path again. I think yeah. they've kind of course corrected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're yeah they retconned out a bunch of crap. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, they've also 
kept in a bunch of other crap. Uh, yeah, this whole thing of Mystique being being Striker, show, you know, appearing as Striker sure. and fishing Wolverine out of the, the river in right. at, at the end of Future Past. Like, what, what's going to happen there? Like, how, that's going to screw continuity further. Which, right. which is like, you guys up, just right? bailed yourselves out of fucked up continuity and now you've basically... Say, all you had to do was cut that, cut that scene out. Just cut sure, that scene yeah. out altogether. Not let Mystique be masquerading as right. Striker mm-hmm. and just leave Wolverine's origin as we've seen it. Just leave it the fuck alone. Let let it be the, the X2 version of his origin with Striker that we saw in the flashbacks and just leave it. Just yeah, leave it there. Absolutely. Yeah. We didn't need any more than that. Well, we're not getting Green Lantern until 2020. It's, That's because they're waiting for us to collectively forget about the, the Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I was going to say, but it'd be yeah. funny if like somewhere around like 2018... You know, they do a big announcement and we sing Green Lantern 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So let's, let's move on here. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we're kind of done with our, our main review for the day. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and jump into our cosplayer spotlight. And since Sarah's not here this week, she's our spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Whether she likes it or not. Whether she likes it or not. So... That's what you get for not These being These are from the Tucson Comic Con. Yeah, this right is now. actually this is like recent. This is yeah. actually the picture of her. Uh, so she's cosplaying here as Alana from Saga. Yeah. If you've mm-hmm. not, re- if you're not reading Saga, stop watching us and just go read it. I, I won't. No, 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 no. Finish <laughs> watching the episode and then go read it. Okay. Either way, don't ever tell people to stop. <laughs> stop, watching. stop watching this right now. No, right don't. now, go watch it. No. Um, <laughs> so this is. Uh, I don't. This is. James Analyk with her as, He's, you know... Did we ever release episode zero? No, we didn't. He's That's, on episode zero, which we should release, because I think... Yeah, it's it's going to be it's gonna stay in the vault. It's going to stay in the vault. It's probably going to be a Patreon uh, prize exclusive. for, exclusive I enjoy for that. people who... Okay, I really who, enjoy uh, that really, talk. Yeah. But they... I don't, I don't know who this uh, third person is with them, but obviously it's the babysitter from Saga, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really... Really loving this series. I'm, if you get a chance to... Yeah, I've only read the first, the first collected issue, or... Collected volume. Yeah, yeah, volume me. one. And it's really it's good. A, yeah, it's it's really <laughs> it's out there. This is the rocket ship forest. Yeah, which yeah. Then we encountered the uh, the tree ships in uh, the Hyperion series, and sure. I was like, okay, yeah. There's no new ideas out there. No, nothing, no. nothing new. <laughs> um, this is you know better picture from uh, yeah. Laughing Koi Productions. She's just she's a great cosplayer. She does a lot of different cosplays. Do you have any more of her? We have. Oh, 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 we went too. No, there you go. Silent. So, yeah, this is. Oh, yeah. She has a lot. I'm just going to read off. I had to write down a, the list of just her <laughs> Marvel cosplays alone. We have Psylocke. This is the from the Dark Angel saga. We have uh, Ultimate Wasp. That's really good. Which is just amazing. <laughs> and I like the force perspective they have. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, to that's, make her look like she's tiny. <laughs> um, what else? We have uh, Jim Lee Storm. She also does a movie verse Storm, but I didn't pull up a picture. She could definitely do a movie verse Storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's yeah. she's got uh, a great. I should have pull up a picture of that as well. But uh, this is Miss oh, America hey. Chavez, yeah. which is uh, amazing. If you haven't had a chance to check out any of that, that was actually the first costume of hers that I saw uh, when we did the uh, Geeks Night Out promo for City of Tempe, and we had cosplayers come down to uh, Tempe Center for the Arts sure. to shoot that little scene. She showed up as uh, as Miss America Chavez. That was yeah. where I first met her. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then this is her Havoc. gender bent Havoc. So, anybody who's aware of cosplay understands that, you know, what's it, Rule 63? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, what was this, for, last year? For every male hero, there's a female cosplay version. Well, is that what yeah, 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 yeah. Rule 63. Is. For every male hero, there's a female <laughs> version yeah. that, that, that uh, is cosplayed on the internet. Uh, or vice versa. Yeah, it's or vice versa. Or vice yeah. versa. It's not exclusive, but not a lot of guys doing female characters but out when there. When they do, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> generally really speaking, it's, yeah. it's generally great. Oh, that's that's not good. Are we done? That's pretty much it. Uh, I think that's all the pictures. Yeah. Just real quick, though, she also does uh, an Omega Sentinel. She has a Gamora from the MCU. Her Gamora's really good. Yeah. Her Gamora's really. I should have had a picture of that up. She also has an X Factor Polaris. Uh, she just does so many Marvel cosplays alone, not to mention 
her like steampunk Pocahontas, I think, or steampunk Jasmine. Steampunk, steampunk Jasmine. Jasmine. No. She does it right, just a traditional Pocahontas. <laughs> traditional yeah. Pocahontas. Uh, then she has that steampunk. Which, which she's gotten. People have given have kind of given her shit about the Pocahontas thing, like the whole. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, you're just playing into a, a, a stereotype, blah blah blah. But you know what? Stop hating on cosplayers. Stop hating on everybody. Period. Right, just yes. let people do just their stop thing. Hating. All right. Just be stop excellent. hating. Be yeah. excellent to each other. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. Ted. That philosophy. That's right. Be excellent to each other. That's right. Well, that's kind of it for the yeah, day. Was... Thanks for watching All Thumbs Issue 2. Uh, I'm Jace. Here uh, with Trevor. And I'm Paul. And we'll see you next week.